Abraham Lincoln is my name, and with my pen I wrote the same. I wrote in both haste and speed, and left it here for fools to read. My childhood home I see again. Reflection. My childhood home I see again, and sadden with the view. And still, as memory crowds my brain, there's pleasure in it too. O oh, memory, thou midway world, twixt earth and paradise, where things decayed and loved ones lost in dreamy shadows rise. And freed from all that's earthly vile, seem hallowed, pure, and bright, like scenes in some enchanted isle, all bathed in liquid light. As dusky mountains please the eye when twilight chases day, as bugle tones that passing by in distance die away. As leaving some grand waterfall, we lingering list its roar, so memory will hallow all we've known, but know no more. Near twenty years have passed away since here I bid farewell to woods and fields and scenes of play and playmates loved so well, where many were but few remain of old familiar things, but seeing them to mind again the lost and absent brings. The friends I left that parting day, how changed as time has sped. Young childhood grown, strong manhood gray, and half of all are dead. I hear the love survivors tell how naught from death could save, till every sound appears a knell and every spot a grave. I range the fields with pensive tread and pace the hollow rooms and feel companion of the dead. I'm living in the tombs. The maniac. The maniac. But here's an object more of dread than aught the grave contains. A human form with reason fled while wretched life remains. Poor Matthew, once of genius bright, a fortune favored child, now locked for eye and mental night, a haggard madman wild. Poor Matthew, I have never forgot when first with madness will, yourself you maimed, your father fought, and mother strove to kill. When terror spread, neighbors ran, your dangerous strength divine, and soon a howling crazy man, your limbs were fast confined. How then you strove and shrieked aloud your bones and sinews bared, and fiendish on the gazing crowd with burning eyeballs glared, and begged and swore and wept and prayed with maniac laughter joined. How fearful were those signs displayed by pangs that killed thy mind. And when at length, though drear and long, time smoothed thy fiercer woes, how plaintively thy mournful song upon that still night rose. I've heard it oft as if I dreamed, far distant, sweet and lone, the funeral dirge ever seemed to breathe. Dead and gone. To drink its strains I've stole away, all stealthily and still, ere yet the rising god of day had his drink to Easter. Ere held his breath, trees with the spell, seemed sorrowing to angels round, whose swelling tears and dew drops fell upon the listening ground. But this is past, and not remains, that raised thee over brew. Thy piercing shrieks and soothing strains are like forever mute. Now fare thee well, more thou the cause, than subject now of woe. All mental pangs by time's kind laws has lost the power to know. O oh, oh, death, death, thou, thou awe-inspiring inspiring prince, that keeps, keeps the world, the world in, fear. in fear. Why, Why dost thou tear more blessed one's tents, and leave him lingering here? And now away to seek some scene less painful than the last, with less of horror mingled in with the present and the past. The very spot where the bread that formed my bones I see, how strange old field on thee to tread, and feel I'm part of thee. The Bear Hunt A wild bear chase didst ever see, then hast thou lived in vain. Thy richest bump of glorious glee lies desert in thy brain. When first my father settled here, twas then the frontier line. The panther's scream filled night with fear, and bears preyed on the swine. But woe for Brune's short-lived fun when rose the squealing cry. Now man and horse, with dog and gun, for vengeance at him fly. A sound of danger strikes his ear, he gives the breeze a snuff. Away he bounds with little fear, and seeks the tangled rough. On press his foes, and reach the ground, where left his half-munched meal. The dogs in circles sent around, and find his fresh made trail with instant cry away they dash and men as fast pursue or logs they leap through water splash and shout the brisk halloo now to elude the eager pack bear shuns the open ground 
through matted vines, he shapes his track and runs it round and round. The tall fleet cur with deep mouthed voice now speeds him as the wind, while half grown pup and short legged feist are yelping far behind. And fresh recruits are dropping in to join the merry corps. With yelp and yell, a mingled din, the woods are in a roar. And round and round the chase now goes, the world's alive with fun. Nick Carter's horse, his rider throws, and more, he'll drops his gun. Now sorely pressed, Bear glances back and lolls his tired tongue, when asked to force him from his track, an ambush on him sprung. Across the glade he sweeps for flight, and Foley is in view. The dogs new fired by the sight, their cry and speed renew. The foremost ones now reach his rear. He turns, they dash away, and circling now, the wrathful bear, they have him full at bay. At top speed, the horsemen come, all screaming in a row. Whoop, take him, tiger, seize the drum, bang, bang, the rifles go. And furious now, the tog he tears and crushes in his ire. Wheels right and left and upward rears with the eyes of burning fire. But let death is at his heart, vain all the strength he applies. And spouting blood from every part, he reels and sinks and dies. And now a dense of clamor rose about who should have his skin. Who first draws blood, each hunter knows this prize must always win. But who did this and how to trace what's true from what's a lie? Like lawyers in a murder case, they stoutly argue fi. A forced vice of blustering mood behind and quite forgot, just now emerges from the wood, arrives upon the spot. With grinning teeth and upturned hair, brim full of spunk and wrath, he growls and seizes on the dead bear and shakes for life and death, and swells as if his skin would tear, and growls and shakes again, and swears as plain as dog can swear that he has won the skin. Conceited whelp, we laugh at thee, nor mind that now a few of pompous two-legged dogs there be conceited quite as you. To Linny. A sweet plaintive song did I hear, and I fancied that she was the singer. May emotions as pure as the song set astir be the worst that the future shall bring her. Abraham Lincoln, his hand and his pen. He will be good, but God knows when. The Chronicles of Reuben. I will tell you a joke about Jewel and Mary. It is neither a joke nor a story. For Reuben and Charles has married two girls, but Billy has married a boy. The girlies he had tried on every side, but none could he get to agree. All was in vain, he went home again, and since that he's married to Natty. So Billy and Natty agreed very well, and Mama's well pleased at the match. The egg it is laid, but Natty's afraid the shell is so soft that it never will hatch. But Betsy, she said, you cursed bald head, my suitor you never can be. Besides, your low crotch proclaims you a botch, and that can never answer for me. On Seduction Whatever spiteful fools may say, each jealous ranting yelper, no woman ever played the whore unless she had a man to help her. General Lee's Invasion of the North, written by himself. In 1863 with pomp and mighty swell, me and Jeff's Confederacy went forth to sack Philadel. The Yankees, they got arter us and give us particular hell, and we skedaddled back again and didn't sack Philadel. To Rosa. You are young and I am older. You are hopeful, I am not. Enjoy life ere it grow colder, pluck the roses ere they rot. Teach your bow to heed the lay, that sunshine soon is lost in shade, that now is as good as any day to take thee rose ere she fade. The Suicide Soliloquy Here, where the lonely hooting owl sends forth his midnight moans, fierce wolves shall over my carcass growl, or buzzards pick my bones. No fellow man shall learn my fate, or where my ashes lie, unless by beasts drawn round their bait, or by the raven's cry. Yes, I've resolved the deed to do, and this the place to do it. This heart I'll rush a dagger through, though I in hell should rue it. Hell, what is hell to one like me, who pleasures never know? 
By friends consigned to misery, but hope deserted too. Tease me of this power to think that through my bosom raves, all headlong leap from hell's high brink and wallow in its waves. Though devils yell in burning chains may wake in long regret, their frightful screams and piercing pains will help me to forget. Yes, I'm prepared through endless night to take that fiery birth. Think not with tales of hell to fright me who am damned it on earth. Sweet steel, come forth from out your sheath, and glistening speak your powers. Rip up the organs of my breath, and draw my blood in showers. I strike, it quivers in that heart which drives me to this end. I draw and kiss the bloody dart, my last, my only friend. Time, what an empty vapor, tis in days how swift. They are swift as an Indian arrow, fly on the, like a shooting star, the present moment just, then slide away in haste, that we never say they're ours, but only say they're past.